Welcome, everyone. My name is Alex. I'm a senior data scientist at Allianz Germany. And I'm part of a data science team that builds serverless, large-scale AI services for the Germans' property insurance market. And this is Philip. Yeah, thank you. My name is Philip. I'm a solution architect working with Allianz and especially Alex, um, also in the area of data science and um, machine learning. Yeah. I don't know if someone here in the audience ever had the pleasure to doing a legacy or core system migration. So typically, this is a super risky, expensive um, operation, which takes a lot of time. And typically, this is due to legacy systems are often in, you know, using old programming language. You have no people available who really understand the processes and the, and the system as well, or even the data. And then when you need to migrate the data, you even need to understand the new system, right? So you need to map the old data to the new data. You do not understand the old data. <laughs> so a pretty tricky thing. But the good news is with the, capital, the capabilities of generative AI and the fact that in most, especially in FSI, most of the data inside of the core systems are based on contracts, customer interaction, we can use this data to shortcut the actual migration by more or less trying to eliminate the legacy system and using the documents, contracts, customer communica communication as ground truths to shortcut the migration and directly move the data into the new system. And this is the idea which yeah, created the project where Alex will know yeah, what Alex will now introduce to you. Thank you, Philip. So I would like to tell you some more about the scope of this project. As Philip said, we are talking about data migration. So in our case, this means data migration from our legacy system to our new system. In our case, this data is contained in contracts, so PDF documents. This idea started with the manual migration of 20,000 contracts of our customers. And we followed there the traditional approach of traditional migrations. So as you might think, this is a pretty time intensive approach where we wouldn't have met our timelines. So we had to completely overthink our old approach. And the result, what we built, you are seeing today. Today, the scope of this project is 10,000 remaining contracts that we migrate automatically or semi-automatically with the help of GenAI and our serverless idea. The most important thing and a key aspect of our idea is that the documents we are talking about build up the ground truth and not the data in our legacy system. This is a crucial part since now we have the ability to go directly from A to D or E respectively, as Philips showed you, without going through the middle part, through the data in our legacy system. Now we are trying to extract up to 150 attributes of our contracts, which, as you can probably think of, works better for some attributes and works worse for other attributes. Now, another thing that I would like to mention is the data quality, if we have contracts from our self, Allianz Germany, is sometimes better. But however, the data quality of third-party contracts might also be challenging. And this is the reason why we have heterogeneous quality in the extraction of our data attributes. The aim for us is obviously to show or to extract these data in a correct way. However, we already see, two, see huge time savings by just showing these data attributes to our business users in a structured way. And as I said, we do have um, our business users who are able to accept or decline the data attributes that we extract in our front end that I will give you an idea in just a second. So basically, we follow the human in the loop principle here. So we do have 
an automatic or semi-automatic way to extract our data attributes. And at the same time, we do have the human in the loop principle where our business users can accept or decline these data attributes in order for us to have the most um, important aspect, a very high data quality. Last but not least, our pipeline runs, runs in batch. So every day, our business user can upload relevant data for our customers for each contract that we then overnight can extract the data attributes from and then at the day after, the business user can see these results and then interact with them in our front end. Now I would like to show you how our pipeline actually works. Generally, we follow the idea of being as serverless as possible in order to scale our idea and to make the work for us data scientists as efficient as possible. So as I said, everything starts with the upload of relevant documents to our S3 bucket. Then what follows is the step functions workflow. So the step function functions workflow is for the whole batch that has been uploaded to S3. Then we have Lambda function that actually does two things. We first check whether previous uploaded documents have failed in our pipeline, and we check if we have new documents coming in. We put them together in a Python list of doc IDs, and then we use this list to process our idea or our pipeline downstream. Then we have a distributed map function. And the distributed map function, where we have all documents that came in, and we process them in parallel. So our map distributed map function is for each document, and our step functions workflow is for the whole batch. Within this distributed map function, we do stuff like OCR, we do stuff like data cleaning, and most importantly, we use Claude 3.5 Sonnet via a Amazon Bedrock to extract our data attributes. Then we aggregate the idea. So this is another key aspect of our process. Imagine you have some data that comes from old, from old documents, and imagine you have the same data that comes from more recent documents. So what we do, we would rank these data attributes. Imagine you have a data attribute that is more recent, from a document, then we would rank this higher. And this enables us to not only have correct data in our new system, but also always have the most updated data, which is, which is a huge step towards data quality and towards better data quality. And we obviously also read and write our um, results from and back to S3. At the end, we have another uh, AWS Lambda function that is connected to our Aurora database in order to, again, update the, um, the step of each document and the state of each document ID to make sure that we don't miss any relevant documents. Now, this is an idea with some test data that I would like to show you today how our front end actually works. So this is a small demo. As you can see on the right, si uh, uh, right side, we have a document from one of our customers that we insure. So this customer, as you can see in the table, has different risks that he's insured against. And for example, he's insured against the risk of burglary and theft. And you can see in the second right column that we have a compensation limit of zero, so no compensation limit, and we have a deductible of 1,000 euro. And this data attribute has been extracted by us, by our model. As you can see, see here on the left-hand side, we show the source, which is AI, because it comes from our Claude model. We show the value of 1,000 euro for the um, deductible, which is correct in this case. We show which page this information has been found on. And we show reasoning to our business user so she can understand why this attribute has been extracted. On the bottom, you see an alternative. So when we can, we always try to also show alternatives to our business users. 
Now this alternative for the same data attribute comes from our legacy system, which name is firmware. You can see that this time the value is 25,000 euros, and you can also see that she's, be, she's able to make a decision of either accepting or declining this data attribute. So, as you see, this data attribute is wrong. And in this special case, the reason why this is wrong is that this data attribute is, comes from our legacy system and is old. So it hasn't been updated by the most recent document. And here you can see again the crucial part of our idea is that we don't only have correct data in our new system, but also the most updated ones. So just to give you some takeaways of our ideas or ideas that we want to share with you in case you are doing or thinking about data migrations. Think of the old days where traditional data migrations might have been done by external experts. You would give away your data, you would get it back, and then mostly suffer by bad data quality that you won't come back. In our case, we are much closer to our user. Our user has, is able to actively be involved in our serverless pipeline and in our process. So we have a much higher user business, acceptance, business user acceptance than we would have in the old days with traditional migrations. Also, what we're really proud of is that for certain data attributes, not for all, but for certain data attributes, we have an accuracy of 84% for our pipeline. And this is another key aspect. We, of course, will never have 100% accuracy. AI is not deterministic, right? So what enables us to be as best as possible is to combine the traditional idea of an automatic extraction of AI with the human in the loop principle in order to get as precise as possible for our data attributes. Now, what got us really moving pretty fast was at the beginning of this year, we kicked off with AWS experts and with data scientists from Allianz Germany in the Gen AI labs in February this year. And there we already thought about how we can implement this idea in a serverless manner and in a scalable manner. And that got us moving very fast from the very beginning on. What we also got to know is that right at the beginning, you should think of an evaluation framework. So think of if you're dealing with LLMs, you're dealing with prompts, right? So you want to be very fast in, if I adapt my prompt, and then see what result this is and test it against my ground truth, you want to be really fast in doing, in doing so in order to be pretty quick and see immediately what outcomes you have if you're changing your prompts and if you're improving your prompts in order to get a better quality. Then, and I can't stress this enough, make sure that you include the business user in your idea. And by that I don't only mean having him or her evaluate your results, but also getting the know-how of your colleagues in order to know, you know about data structures, data quality, data formats from the old system. The old system might be very, or most probably, is very um, different than your new system. And last but not least, as everyone, we also have a huge challenge of data quality. Think of, in our case, about the documents classification. Not every document that we, or that is classified in our system as a contract has to be a contract. So we have also, also to deal with that. And how do we tackle that? As I said, in the very beginning, we have to choose the relevant documents that go into our pipeline, not that we blow it up. So there we also use the insights and the interaction of our business user. So, that's it already. We hope we could give you a very short insight of how we do migrations and how we really 
disruptively do migrations in a very new manner in also large-scale companies like Allianz Germany with the help of Gen.ai and of serverless ideas. Thank you very much.